All right, that was awesome. And yeah, so my name is Kath and I work on the product team at GitHub where I'm focused on working on our documentation. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk with you about some of the updates that we've been making to the docs. And if you've been following along, you've probably seen some of the stuff that we've, that we've been working on. But really, this is about where we're taking documentation with the help of our community. So kind of to set your expectations, I just want to talk through a little bit of the goals that we have for, for today's session. We're going to get to know kind of why we opened source documentation. And we're also going to learn about how you can make contributions to the GitHub documentation itself at get that slash GitHub slash docs. And then we're going to discover kind of where we're taking documentation. And hopefully, you feel a little bit inspired. And so we've been doing a lot to update GitHub documentation this year. So yeah, if you've been following along, you've likely noticed that we've been iterating and updating a whole bunch of stuff within our, Git, our GitHub Actions documentation. And we actually just released two brand new pages for GitHub Education and GitHub Discussions. And so you can, you can definitely follow along, go check out those docs for sure. But one of our main goals with this and these updates is to go from this more traditional documentation site to one that is uh, from one that is kind of this more technical manual to one that is highly immersive and interactive and, and one that really highlights a lot of what our community is and invites them to participate. And GitHub Docs have always been written and managed in code and stored and maintained in a GitHub repository. But to our users, they present as a lot of text to work through. And so really the only way to interact with them is to go and read them, maybe side by side with another tab that you're working in, but you're still just reading through them. And we know people learn in many different ways. And so on the docs team, we're naturally experimenting with updating the documentation to be more inclusive or to have more interactive features. You can actually see something that we have been experimenting with. One of the demos um, that, that we've been really liking is over on docs-playground.herokuapp.com. And you can see some of the interactive elements that we're playing with. We do that there kind of before we migrate things into the larger docs set. So we can kind of play around with them and make sure the interactions are correct because we want everything to be very precise and up to date. And so go over there to check out things like we're at like an editor experience that we're adding and videos, et cetera. But just like code, docs really should not never be static. Products always change, and we're always coming to understand them through many different kinds of lenses and a lot of different experiences too. So on the docs team at, at GitHub, we're constantly updating the docs to make sure that they're accurate. And uh, this year, we're taking that, that even like one step further to create this really living, breathing, application that's a reflection of the content, the community, and the tools that we're building at GitHub as we ship new things. And GitHub's products are, they really reach this wide variety of developers. And often we see that developers on the docs who, developers come to the docs who are new to GitHub entirely. Some of them are new to Git entirely. And we want to understand and incorporate their perspectives into all of the different, so that we reach all of the different types of developers. So whether you're new to programming or new to GitHub, or you've just, you're just new to one of the products that we've recently shipped. As developers, we're always learning something different. And whether it's a new language, or it's a new GitHub project, or new GitHub features, we want to get that perspective baked in. I know for me, when I am, um, when I'm when I'm an expert in something, I explain it in a totally different way than if I'm new to something. And so we we see people, we see developers of many different walks coming to GitHub documentation. So we want to provide that perspective for all of those folks in our documentation. And really, the goal is docs should be simple and easy to use. They should offer many different ways to digest information through reading text or stories 
or looking at other examples from other developers or through things like tutorials or more interactive play elements like videos or an IDE that you can test out certain examples from, you should be able to play with all of these products while you're learning them. And so this is a big reason why we decided to take docs .com and make them open source. So we did this this past October, and I'm really excited to talk with you about how that's been going. And this is from the moment we actually flipped the switch. It was just before 9 a.m. And on, I think it was like October, the beginning of October, we did this for Hacktoberfest. And we got this notification in our Slack channel. So there was a little bit of a celebratory moment. Mona ch chimed into, it was really pretty fun. And what this meant for us was not just that we had hit this milestone that we had been planning for a really long time, but it meant that we got to invite the community in to collaborate with us on docs.github.com through issues and pull requests and discussions and even through their own projects. So one of the examples that I really love from early on in our open source journey is this guide. And this was written by Chrissy Lamar. She's a PowerShell developer and the maintainer of DBA tools. And I'll tell you a little secret. We don't have anybody on the docs team that specializes in PowerShell, but we do have developers in our community who really wanna know how they can create CI workflows and test their PowerShell project. So I think it was on day one, Chrissy got really excited and started to write out this guide. And she and I got to talking and I was like, you know what, we should just do this. And it was great because she knows a ton about PowerShell and a lot about GitHub Actions. And so she really got to bring that expertise. We collaborated with her on this so that she could help, um, with, so we could help her with content styles and contributing and and create this whole new article for people so we could reach even more folks through this tutorial who are in the PowerShell community. Even before we shipped this, we knew that it was going to be successful and people wanted it because we saw people using it as a PR before we even merged it into the main branch. And open sourcing, really, what it does is it lets us plug some of these gaps that we have in our documentation by inviting experts in like Chrissy to participate and working with her to help tell the story and write the tutorials themselves. And if you go to uh, docs.github.com slash actions, you'll see Chrissy's tutorial featured um, and, and called out in on that page. So you can go and learn how to build and test with PowerShell. So we open sourced docs.github.com in two main part, main, main, or sorry, main parts. We open sourced the content itself and the application. And the content is all in Markdown and uses liquid rendering. The app that powers this is mostly Node.js. And we've recently started to experiment with adding React components to it to help, it, help make it more interactive. And so you'll see some of that stuff coming soon. And you can check out the, that demo for it on, on that URL that I mentioned before, docs-playground. So I'm gonna walk you through a, a really quick demo for how to contribute um, really easily and get started. So here we have the quick start for GitHub actions and I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna click this button, make a contribution. And once I click that, I'm actually taken to the code base and, and that page in edit, GitHub edit mode and I can actually make that contribution and then go through the, the GitHub PR workflow itself. And so you see me do this over and over again. <laughs> so um, this, uh, this project has been going on for quite a while and this summer we decided to kind of crank it up so we could hit our, our milestone of being able to open source in October with Hacktoberfest. But we also had that didn't that was that was definitely not without its challenges. And so if you are, you know, if you're taking a project public that has already been established, you definitely know that that there's a lot that goes into it, a lot that goes into planning the contribution guidelines, things that um, and things that you want to account for and issues, etc. So we had several um, we had several 
different challenges along the way. And I'm going to talk about three of them. And this first one is that we actually, on the documentation team, we work in public and we work in private. And that's really because while we do work in, against our, our product roadmap and a lot goes into our product roadmap that, that you all can see, there's a lot of detail that happens in the documentation and about the features and how to use them, et cetera. So before we launch, we actually want to work on all of those, those that documentation in private. And that happens on a repository, um, on an internal repository. And then we also maintain our external repository. So what this does, you can imagine, we've got, you know, ma maintaining that all of this stuff manually could get really tricky. So we, we use two different things to help us with this. We use a GitHub action that is called, it's actually open source, it's called RepoSync, that actually syncs PRs that are merged into the main branch every 15 minutes. And this allows us to work across both repositories in more of an automated way. And then we also use early access documentation. And so we do ship sets of documentation that are available to customers for certain features that are under a private beta. And this allows us to ship things to our customers to test that, out those features that we're shipping to them in a private beta, as well as the documentation, so that we can fine tune all of those bits of the documentation while the product changes in private beta before it goes into GA and make sure that, that everything is accurate. And then our CI and CD workflow uh, was also very challenging. We have, we have over 40 GitHub actions in our docs repo and many of them are used for CI CD. So there's a lot going on here. We've got internal contributions to our internal repository that's synced every 15 minutes. We've got open source contributions that are happening. And we have lots of conversations that are going on with all of this content. Our, our content set is really large. And so there's a lot to pay attention to. When you open up a PR for, um, for the docs, uh, for the docs re um, repository, sorry about that. I think you can probably hear my dogs. I've got a clique high and an Australian shepherd and they love everything to do with open source documentation. So they might chime in. But when you open up a PR for this, you're, um, you, you, you know, you want all of your checks to pass. And so we do lots of, there's lots of stuff going on. We do what a lot of developers do, which is keep that PR open and kind of babysit it while we wait for all those checks, checks to pass and then click the manual merge button. But now with auto merge, we can actually go about doing our, doing our business, go into onto other projects, open up other PRs, and as Neha said, let the robots deal with actually automatically merging that into the main branch. And then finally, one of the things that is really important to us on documentation, and this is actually baked into all of our content styles and our content architecture and how we write our documentation is translations. And so our docs are available in five different languages, English, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, and Portuguese, which um, Brian, would, Brian, Brian would love to know because he's learning a lot about Portuguese this whole week. But today we use a tool called Crowdin to help us translate all of our content and keep us updated as we make changes to the documentation. So we update, we translate documentation as it gets inserted brand new into the code base. But then every time that documentation changes, Crowdin manages that whole entire pro process and lets people know when there are changes or when there are new contributions that need to be translated. And right now we don't have a way to accept open source contributions to our open source repository for these translation files. And this is because you know, we're, uh, we're us on the docs team. We don't have all of the, uh, we don't have a lot of experts in all of these different languages to be able to review and verify that those translations were actually correct and accurate. But we do really want to make it possible for people to update language, our language files in the open source repository and also continue to work with Crowdin to manage all of these, these translation projects. So we're working on this, a way to offer open source uh, contributions to our language files coming in the next year. 
And right now, there are, there are lots of different ways to contribute to our open source documentation. And three of them that we, we really love are these three. You can, that, um, it's basically, you can contribute with small bug fixes. And those are gonna be things like you know, typos or a small bug in the code base. You can also contribute with curated issues, something that's a little bit beefier and that you need some advice from our content writers on, but something that's not too large where you would actually have to get into the nuts and bolts of really understanding our content styles and our content architecture and how that all works. That is coming soon. And so you, I've, I kind of teased this in the beginning of my talk. We, Chris, Chrissy Lamar actually contributed on this final path um, which is an entirely new article. And because we have a lot going on, like translations, uh, we really need to pay attention to what's, what's going on with our content styles. Also, working with Chrissy and working with open source maintainers or open source contributors on these types of projects actually allows us to get a ton of feedback about our content styles and our contributing workflows. And so we can, actually, we can keep iterating on how this process works. And we're fine tuning it right now so that we can get more contributions uh, for entire articles or tutorials from the community because we really want to highlight what everybody's doing and work with our community in all three of these capacities. And so we're, we're not only drawing on what's going on in uh, our open source repository, but we're also drawing on what's going on within the community itself. So I'm gonna show you something that we recently added to the GitHub Actions page, which is code examples. So I know when I'm learning a new language or about a new feature, I like to turn to other developers and see how they're using it. And here you see me navigating through a, all of the different code examples, and then these link directly to GitHub. We're actually using Sarah Dresner's awesome actions list. It's been mentioned several times this whole entire week. It's a really great resource if you're looking for, um, if you're looking for uh, code examples for actions. And if you can't, we don't have an action for pizza. Sorry, Brian. But if you can't find something, you can actually go and make a contribution for, um, for whatever you're looking for, for code examples. So if you wanna join, um, if you wanna get started and join our community right now, you totally can. And you can get started at uh, github.com slash github slash docs and go there in, in, and, and contributing is super easy. Our docs team has been standing by all week answering questions. We've been answering lots of questions in our issues and responding to pull requests, but you can go there and open up an issue. You can pick up an issue and open up a PR just and get started super fast. We also use GitHub discussions on our open source repository. So go to that slash doc slash discussions and ask us a ton of questions and give us some feedback too. What do you wanna see within your documentation? Documentation is so important to how people understand a product or a new technology and how people understand how GitHub works. And we really want to make our documentation a lot better and improve it. And we need your feedback. So definitely go there, open up a discussion, ask a question, give us a lot of feedback on that. Or you can just reach out to me directly. I am at Simsoka on Twitter, also on GitHub. So yeah, thank you all so much for, for um, listening to me talk about, about documentation. I could go on and on and on, and, but I'll, I'll do that on Twitter. I'll fleet some stuff for everybody.